Hello and welcome to this Cantabile walkthrough. Today we're going to be talking about racks. Racks are a way to group a set of plugins and other objects into a component that can be reused across multiple songs. Uh, racks are available in Cantabile Performer and a limited version of them is available in Cantabile Solo. Mostly what I'll be talking about here is the more advanced version which is only available in Performer. Because I'm going to be switching songs quite a bit here I'm going to start by just saving this set list. That way we can put the songs in the set list and quickly switch between them. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is start by adding a new rack. Now a rack file has to have a name in Cantabile. You can't have an unnamed one like you can have an un unnamed song. So when you choose this new rack command here, or it's also available up here, the first thing you're asked to do is where you want to save the file. So I'm just going to create one here and I'm just going to call it organ. Okay, and you can see there's a new slot here. It looks just like a plugin, or very similar, but it's a rack. It's indicated by this icon here. Now, if you're familiar with Cantabile 2, you would expect that when you expand this out to show the contents of the rack, this has changed quite a bit in Cantabile 3. And what now happens is you double click this slot to edit the contents of the rack. And what you'll see is the this button here, this eject button here, uh, indicates that you're actually editing this rack, the one called organ and you can get back to the song file by clicking that. Okay, so double click the rack to get into it and edit it and this button to get back out. You can also use the escape key. Now a rack file is very similar to a song. It has nearly all the same settings as a song file. So you can think of it as like a song within a song if you like. Um, it has routings, bindings, triggers. Uh, there's no show notes on a rack uh, because they're, they're a kind of very song specific thing. Although that might be added at some point. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just put in a couple of plugins here to show how this works. So I'm just going to insert a VB3 and I'm also going to insert a, um, a Leslie plugin. And I'm just going to connect these together. So I'm going to connect. So we've got, we don't need that round. So I've got on screen keyboard uh, going to VB3 plugin and its stereo out is going to this Leslie, which is being sent to the main speakers. So this is just like how you would set it up in a song. And if I play this now, we can hear that plugin and the effect applied to it. So if we go back to the song, you'll see that the you'll see that the only thing that's in this song is this organ. There's nothing actually routed to it or from it. It's just a file that's been loaded uh, inside this parent song. Okay. So what I can do now is I can save this. Uh, let's save this song as I'm just going to call it song one. Put that in the set list and then I'm going to save another copy of it as song 2. So we've now got two song files both referencing this same rack. If you were to create a new song you can add a reference to this existing song by just going existing rack and selecting the one we selected before. And let's just for the sake of it save that as song 3. Okay so you can see we've now got three songs all with the same organ and doesn't matter which one I select they always always sounding the same. Okay, that, that's the basics of what a rack is. It's a, a reusable component that sits in the background behind a song and can uh, load plugins, routes, bindings, triggers, etc. The next thing I'm going to show you is just like a song has uh, states, which I've covered in another video, they're basically like presets on the song file. A rack also has a set of states. So if I go to the states panel here while I'm editing this rack, I can create some new states. So let's call this one uh, with Leslie and another one without Leslie. And what I'm going to do is on, on the one without Leslie, I'm just going to bypass that plugin. So you can see we've got one with and one without. Okay, and you should be able to hear it. So that's with and this one's without. It's a more subtle effect. I think this plugin has a bit of Leslie effect built into it anyway. Okay, if I go back to the parent song now, you can see that I can select the state here, just like a plugin preset. And what I can also do is I can choose different presets or different states on this rack on different songs. So this one I'm gonna choose with, this one, I'm going to choose without 
and you'll see as I switch between these two songs, the selected state changes. Okay, with and without. So that, that's uh, rack state and editing them from the parent song or selecting them from the parent song. And the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, at the moment, these, this rack is kind of self-contained. All the routing is within the rack itself. So we've got from the on-screen keyboard through these two plugins straight to the main speaker output. You can also create connections between routes, uh, sorry, between racks and the parent song. So if I was to change this connection to be from the rack's MIDI input, then what happens, there's no longer MIDI coming from the on-screen keyboard. This rack needs to be fed MIDI in order for it to work. So if I go back to the parent song and create a route from the on-screen keyboard and connect it to the organ's MIDI in, you can see now that it works again. Okay, so you could use this on the song, for example, to, depending on the song, you might route a different MIDI channel or perhaps a different keyboard or device to the organ. You might apply different transforms. So for example, on one song, you might have uh, one transpose setting on a different song, a different transpose setting, etc. Okay, and the same applies for the outputs. So on the organ, I could connect the final output here to the rack's stereo out. And then in the parent song, I would need to do the same. I would need to connect, connect the rack's stereo out to the main speakers. Okay, so we've got the same effect now, but the song now has much more control over the connections to and from this rack instead of it being all self-contained. You'll, you'll see here that the, the rack has by default a MIDI out and a stereo out. There's also a MIDI in and a stereo in, and you can actually edit those ports just like you can on many other objects in Contabulate. So you can see there's a set of rack audio ports. You see the stereo in and a stereo out. You can create additional channels and ports here if you need to. And the same for the MIDI ports. So you can see by default there's just a MIDI in and a MIDI out. You could create additional ones if you need to do some advanced MIDI routing. Okay, next thing I'm going to show you is connecting racks together. So I'm just going to create another rack here. And I'm just going to call it, let's say, Master Effects. And inside this rack, I'm just going to put, sorry, not that. I'm going to put a plugin, put something that'll be noticeable, a ring modulator. Okay, and I'm just going to hook it up to the, sorry, we don't need that. I'm just going to connect the rack's stereo in to the ring modulator and the ring modulator stereo out to, I'm going to leave it on the main speakers. So what will happen now is any audio that's sent to this master effects racks, stereo input will go through the ring modulator and be sent to the main speakers. Okay, so what I'll do now is rather than routing from here to the main speakers, I'm going to connect it to the master effects stereo in. So we've now got on-screen keyboard, into this self-contained rack, which does something. We don't really care about it from here, but it's stereo out, so then connected to the master effects stereo input, which then sends it to the speakers. So you can hear now that extra ring modulator effect on that. The other thing you can do is, rather than having to wire this up explicitly for each song, is if you have a rack like this Master Effects rack that is being used in every song, you can actually connect directly inside this organ rack to the Master Effects rack. So if I add an object here, you can see that this rack Master Effects is available. So any other racks that the parent song references would be listed out here. So I can add a reference to this Master Effects rack, and then I can connect directly from this MDA Leslie to the Master Effects. So now in the parent song, we need to reference the master effects rack so that it gets loaded. A rack can't actually cause another rack to be loaded. It can only reference ones that the song already has referenced. So you can see here we've got the organ and internally to this organ, it's being routed to the master effects rack. Uh, that's just another way to wire them up if, if you're doing that sort of thing a lot. 
Um, one, one thing that you may not have realized just by what I've shown here is that if you have multiple songs all referencing the same racks, then when you switch songs, the racks aren't unloaded and reloaded. So this is a way to really speed up the speed of which you can switch between songs. You'll see here that besides these pop-ups, which normally wouldn't happen, you can see that I can switch quite quickly between all these songs. And the racks are actually left running in the background. Their audio processing isn't interrupted. They've, they've just been uh, modified so that the appropriate states are applied, presets are, are changed and so forth. But the plugins are left loaded, they're left running, and they're pretty much um, not interrupted at all. Okay, uh, what's next? The next thing um, you might want to do is you'll see both of these songs well, the other thing you'll notice is now that I'm switching back to these songs, this master effects rack is already is being automatically loaded. That's because the organ rack is referencing it. So it needs to be loaded in the parent song. Cantabile figures that out and does it for you. Um, what's wrong with this one? We need to create a route from here to the organ. Okay. Let me just save that. And let me just check this one's working as well. No. Okay, so we've now got three songs which are all kind of similar. They're all set up in a similar way with the same same set of racks. Some with the Leslie, some without. The next thing you want to do is let's imagine that this master effects rack, rather than well, but by default, if you were to adjust the gain setting on this, for example, and save that, and then switch to another song. You'll see that each song is getting its own gain setting. So as I switch between those, okay, and that for some situations that's perfectly fine and that's exactly what you want. You want to be able to fine tune the gain setting down for each particular song. For something like a master effects rack, however, you might be trying to, you know, trim your whole setup for a particular environment and you don't want anything in this rack to be affected by the particular songs. It's like a global shared state, if you like. So what you can do is you can go into the effect, sorry, into the rack. So I've got this master effects rack open. And if I go to the rack's properties or options, there's this option here, let the parent song control this rack selected state and gain. So if I was to turn that off, then what will happen is now when I switch between these songs, the, the effect level won't be managed by the song. So, and you'll notice that the gain setting is gone. That's because you can't control it from here. That's just to sort of remind you. But if I was to go into here and dial this down, for example, it's very quiet now. You'll see that no matter which song I select, except that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Sorry, bear with me a second. Uh, that's because of this different state here. Okay, so let me just reroute that to there. Let me just check this one as well. Okay, so they're wired up correctly. Okay, so you'll see now, quiet, quiet, quiet. And if I was to go into this effect, this rack now, and turn the gain back up, you should see that they've all been affected the same way. Okay, so that's a way to uh, have a central place where you can control a setting for the environment rather than on a per song basis. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is something called exported properties or exported behaviors, if you like. And what I'm going to do to show this, I'm just going to go back into here, into this organ rack. I'm just going to delete these two states. All right. So what, what I was using those states for is just to control this uh, Leslie effect, whether it was enabled or not. So I'm just going to turn that back on. Right? And what you'll see now is that if we spin through these songs again, you'll see that they all sound the same because we've lost that state. But what we can do is if we go into this organ rack and then we select this plugin that we wanted to control, and go to the states panel, you see that when you're editing the states of a rack that there's an extra set of checkboxes here and what this these, these are the regular state behaviors so these are the things that will be controlled by the states in this rack but this extra column here 
determines the when it, when this option is turned on this setting is controlled by the parent song rather than by the state or by the rack itself so uh, what we were trying to control here was the the run and the bypass mode right so this this option here is affected by this uh, behavior here so if we were to put that to be ex controlled by the external by the song right so this means export whatever this property is to the parent song and let it control it okay so now we're on song two at the moment and we're going to leave the leslie effect on okay so you can hear that if we now switch to say song three we can go back into this organ rack and we can turn that off save this right so we've now got the leslie effect turned off and in song two it'll still be on Okay, so as I switch between these two songs, you can see that this particular property here is being controlled by the song, not by the rack itself. Okay, so that's a convenient way when you have you know one property inside a rack that needs to be controlled, you know, on a per song basis, but you don't want to have to create a separate state for each particular combinations of of properties. That some of some of that can be a bit daunting, um, but but once you get into it and sort of get your head around these things, you'll find it's really quite powerful. And there's there's a lot of different ways you can set it up, and um, you've just got to get past the initial learning curve with it. Okay, the final thing I want to show you with racks is what's called the background rack. So we just get out of here. If you look in the view menu here, you'll see there's this command here, background rack. And what this is is this is a rack that is always running in the background. Typically what it's used for is for bindings. So for instance, you might have a binding here. I've got one just set up, which is the on-screen keyboard, controller 16, to load the next song or part in the set list. Okay. But you, you could put all sorts of bindings in here and they would be available across all songs. Doesn't matter which song is loaded, they will work. And the same in here, you could load, for instance, you know, maybe a, a drum machine onto channel 10 and that would be available across all songs. Uh, no matter which one is loaded. But primarily this is used for bindings from, you know, uh, external control surface onto globally uh, available commands in Cantabile. Okay, so that's been a bit of a whirlwind tour of racks. They take a little bit of getting used to. They're also a key feature for fast set list switching or song switching with a set list with what's called set list preloading but i'll cover that when i do the video on set lists okay so i hope this has been useful if you'd like to check it out there's a trial version of cantabile available at the website uh, head on over there and if you've got any questions email me or visit the forums there's um there's always somebody there willing to help okay thanks guys bye